Hello everybody and welcome to New Haven and the home of Valet Pro. Uh, we're joined here by Greg uh, who runs Valet Pro and how long, how long have you been running Valet Pro for? Um, 14, 15 years. Um, so uh, yeah, um, started off as a home business and uh, um, uh, as progressed from there. Um, 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 I, I think it was five, six years um, running alongside a normal job. Mm -hmm. um, before I could work on it full time, um, and then from there, you know, the business started building proper momentum. Um, uh, and uh, a year ago, we, we, we made our latest move to uh, New Haven. Um, so uh, you know, we, 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 we've introduced a new management team. We've got um, um, a, a formulator in place. Um, we've got a proper lab set up, and so everything's really starting to come together for a business that can um, grow globally. What I really like about Valet Pro is, as you were saying, it started from as a part-time thing. There are a lot of people who want to get into uh, a car care brand, and they've got a mortgage to pay, kids and wives to, to, to fund. So the idea of giving everything up, unless you've got a large amount of seed capital, I'm guessing you didn't inject 20 million quid into the company to get it started. It was organically grown up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, I put a thousand pound into it, um, which got me my initial stock, and uh, you know I didn't take anything out of the business for six years. You know, it was just building that cash up because you need the stock, and and actually, you know, uh, if you think of it as a, an educational path, because things don't go the way that you want them to, mm. and uh, you know. Uh, it, in reality, you know, um, well, actually, you know, all the way along running a business, there's moments that you just want to give up. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, um, I would say that actually, the the business right now is probably presenting the toughest challenges we've ever had or I've ever had. Um, um, but um, um, you know, obviously, when you're starting out and um, uh, cash is harder to come by, yeah. then. Um, Cash flow is always a challenge, yeah. and I mean, I'm thinking uh, from the point of view of running. You're how roughly how old are you now? Thirty. Oh, that's rather nice. Um, I'm forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah. And so you've been doing this for sixteen years. So you started in your mid-thirties. Um, yeah, I started. Yeah, um, I started at thirty. Wow. Yeah. And before that, I mean, because I'm just trying to get to know the grade behind the Valet Pro, and um, you were. What was your job beforehand? What what industries were you in? Uh, I, I was a mobile car valeter before that, um, and uh, but you know I, uh, from um, uh, you know I, I suppose about twenty three onwards I, 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 I uh, well my my working career was uh, you know just doing lots of you know I worked as a waiter at TGI's uh, I've gone travelling uh, and that's probably where. My mind opened up to running my own business, um, selling stuff out of the bag. And it's a mindset, that isn't it? Is is when quite often you when you're kind of getting into adult life, I guess, and you think, oh, that's this is going to be the channel for me. And actually, travelling sometimes, or sometimes it's when people get really ill or they realise their sudden their mortality and think, actually, no, damn it, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make something more. I'm gonna be a bit more ambitious mm. and setting up a company like this. I mean, that's a hell of a journey you've had. Mm. Um, and it's interesting you say you're a mobile car valeter because. The products, in, in terms of how easy they are to use and the, how a lot of our PVD guys use them for the, the wash and decon stage, it really shows that it's run by somebody who was already who, who knew what you wanted in, in from a product. You get quite a lot that are either developed by chemists, mm. and they're from a chemical point of view, they're absolutely brilliant, they're marvellous, they're pieces of art, mm. but from a practical point of view, they might not be so good. And then equally, you get the ones that are more business oriented, and they've got themselves a very pretty label, and they've got some very clever marketing people behind it. But again, the products, when you're actually using it in the real world, don't necessarily do as well as other products. Yeah, I think it's realising the flaws in the product, um, and uh, you know that that's the foundation of Valley Pro, and it's also why we have. Uh, uh, a, a detailer on board now because um, al al although I've got really good experience, mm -hmm. uh, it's not as current as. That's a, yeah, yeah. 50, a lot has happened in 15 years, hasn't it? Yeah, in it, terms of the it, it, it's changed a lot. So, you know, I've got a, a, a younger man in that uh, understands the detailing community now, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, that's. The guide base for uh, our chemist to create a 
create the right products for us. Uh, and, and, and it's the usability of these things as well, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's things like a wash and wax um, product that, um, you know, traditionally they that uh, leave kind of streaky marks when mm. you rinse them down so yep. they didn't rinse off particularly easy or you had to use a lot of product because it didn't clean very well because you've got this uh, uh, argument between um, the, 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 the wax ingredients and the, the, the detergent. So, you know, getting those balances right so it actually does the job that you intended it to, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it, it is really important and, you know, I don't, I don't think that a chemist can do that, you know, right. yeah, uh, really unless of course they're really into car care. Yeah, but they can be sometimes. Um, oh, well, I am. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mm. think uh, you know that the, 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 they, you know, they can start to learn and understand. But um, uh, there's a lot of training that goes into being a chemist, yes. and it's a completely different mindset. You get letters after your name, though, which you don't want to hold as a detailer. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've got the whole day here at Valipro, and we're going to be interviewing uh, five different people at least about all the different sections. So I don't want to go into too much detail on, sure. say, the marketing or the products, because that's all to come. Mm. Uh, what I really want to know is the man behind Ballot Pro and how it came. So you're a mobile car balloter, yeah. and you realised you wanted to be more than that. You wanted to be. You wanted to address the problems with the products that you've seen. You wanted to kind of reach for the stars, so to speak. Mm. Um, and I apologise everyone for having pieces of paper. Normally I try to ad lib these things, but because we have so many interviews to get through, um, I wanted to make some notes for myself. Um, but you started up, and you started up in terms of the reason why. Did you wake up one morning and think, actually, I want to start a company, I want to call it Ballot Pro, and in 16 years' time I want to move to New Haven? No, not quite, <laughs> no. Um, the, 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 I mean, I, I'd, I'd run lots of other uh, uh, little businesses, so I, I had my car balloting business. Mm -hmm. um, I'd done stuff in telecom, so you know, selling cheap landline calls and mobile phones and other mm -hmm. bits and pieces. But you, you know, with with that, I built a nice little business that had regular income. Yeah. Um, but the problem that I had with that business was that I wasn't in complete control of the product. Yeah. So when things weren't right it was very difficult to fix. Well you're further down the supply chain I guess and at the moment yeah. you're at the very top of the supply chain, sort of at the pyramid so to speak, between your suppliers for raw ingredients and then the customer supplies, so it puts you in control. Yeah. Do you think all business owners are basically just control freaks? <laughs> I've heard that story, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, po possibly. Um, I, 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 I don't... diplomatic of you there, I mean, there's a bit of plausible deniability potentially. I, I, I don't think I'm that controlling, to be fair. I, I think I'm, but then at the same time, you know, uh, this is kind of difficult to put across. But you know, when when um, uh, you know, if I if I was in a a, 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 a group of people, um, and I was just one of those group of people, I'm the sort of bloke that would stay quiet and not really say much. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I would know that I was right. I might even put my suggestions forward to the group, but there would be there's always someone that's more dominating. Yeah, I've got to say you're not the, the, quite often you get, and, and I've come across obviously a lot of guys who run businesses big and small, and a lot of them they're, they're the alpha dogs, so to speak, and they yeah. want to be the noisiest thing in the room, like me. And sometimes they know what they're talking about, and sometimes they don't, like me. So um, I, I can absolutely see that, and I think actually that's reflected in the business. We've just had a little walk around just a familiarisation. And it's a very, very friendly place and very easy going and not formal. And you're saying not power freak or control freak or anything like that. And I didn't see any chains connecting staff to desks or anything like that. So they're all very well hidden. Um, and I know you've made some huge changes, namely this place. As we'll do some panning shots from outside. It's vast and mm. it's entirely valid pro, this, this whole building. And um, inside it's mostly warehouse and your mixing areas and your bottling areas, your labeling and storage. Uh, and then the actual kind of the office block where you've got downstairs, you've got your marketing, you've got your um, safety, safety and compliance and all that side of things. And then up here you've got the, 
the, uh, the kind of executive team, I guess is what you call them nowadays, yeah. um, doing all the, the hard stuff. So um, it's nicely compact in a way. It's obviously a big site, but it's kind of nicely all in one contained business. Um, and as I say, we'll do lots of panic shots and going around and basically try and take photos and video of everything that we're allowed to. Um, appreciably, there's going to be some top secret stuff going on here. Um, but at the same time, you only make products for yourself. So you don't, um, you're not a, a private label brand or do you make products for other people? Uh, we don't make for other people, no. It's uh, just just uh, our own brand. And Kellogg's or the car industry. We, 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 we did do it for a bit. Um, um, for one particular company, but uh, you know the reality was is that you know that you, we've got limited resources, and and when you're uh, you're diverting your attention to support someone else, you're taking it off your own game. Absolutely. So um, we uh, we we uh, supported that customer and passed them over to a, a company that specialises in that type of work. Um, and so we could just focus on what we we were doing, and and uh, you know in reality um, when when you're doing private label the margins are pretty uh, slender anyway. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and uh, you know I, I can see why that type of business model works, but you, have you to know be tailored to it. I mean, if you look at the likes of CarCam, their their facility is all about being able to do it. But yeah. they've only recently bought out, or really they've got a, a reseller range of, a, a, sorry, rather a consumer range, mm. and they've only just started pushing that um, because their main focus really is on the white label. And from your point of view, you know, your brand, you're going to customers, you're going through channel, going through resellers. It's your brand that you want to work on. I, I totally understand mm. that. This growth that you've had, I'm intrigued by it because obviously you've got that time scale which is, is 15 years, it's from in corporate terms, that's a, that's a very mature business. Mm. Um, do you think the growth is a result of um, hitting new markets or increasing a market share or do you think it's a reflection of the detailing industry as a whole um, growing and you've just managed to sort of surf that wave of growth? Um, I think there's a combination. Um... Um, in reality, I think it's getting into um, spreading out, uh, appealing to Europe. But mm. I also think it's partly to do with the way in which we've um, um, created relationships with the, the, the retailers and distributors that we've done. Um, you know, things evolve, and you you have to improve things as you go on. Um, uh, and and I think the market's starting to change again. Mm. So. Um, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're looking at how we can improve and, and work with the people that we work with so, and, and how we can work with you know, new territories and new marketplaces and also get better penetration because um, uh, you know, we, we, we do very well in the Scandinavian countries um, and we'd probably have a ten times bigger business mm. if we had the same penetration in the rest of Europe as we do in those countries. What was really impressive was at the factory you have all these labels on shelves and they're all in different languages and I didn't realise you were such an international operation. You were saying that are the Scandies a strong place for you? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a reasonably strong market for us. Um, you know, there, there, there's always more that can be done. Um, and, uh, you know, for uh, uh, small countries, you know, we, we, we've done very well in them. Mm. Um, um, it's predominantly on you know, some particular product lines that we do very well in, yeah, in those okay. countries. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the, the, the work that we've got to do is um, with those distributors is work on um, getting more of the whole range accepted mm. and moving through. So, you know, in the UK, we're, we're pretty very, well, we're very broad across the products that we sell. Well, if you say that, and, and, I, and I agree, you've got a big range, uh, but I was thinking, to most of us in, in the in the trade and stuff, and you say that probably right. What's the most useful thing there is a citrus target glue mm. and dragon's breath. Yeah, very impressive products. And you do uh, what's the name of the snow foam? Is citrus? Is there a citrus snow foam? Uh, we've got citrus pre wash. Citrus um, pre wash. That's the one. We've also got the advanced neutral snow foam and pH neutral. Mm -hmm. um, but we've recently re uh, released uh, our Formula One. Yes. Which, which, yeah. Yeah. Words, yes. yeah. Yeah, so that that that's you know all to do with uh, uh, the management team and uh, the, the staff. So we all chip in with different names. I think 
Um, I think that might have been Josh actually that came up with Pandora. If I've got that wrong, I apologise. <laughs> it's a good play of words. But they, and, and so you've got those campaign products, and you were saying there's suppliers, new suppliers, both UK and European, that are, are saying, right, we want this, this, and this, but you're like, well, we've got this huge plethora of products here. And so I can see developing it and expanding that is a challenge. And we'll go into the kind of corporate challenges in, in a later, later chat, I suspect. Um, but the macro industry, it strikes me that Valipro has been very good at staying consistent but growing in an industry that now is very led by vogues and fashion and it can be quite temporary you know you get brands that pop up and one month they're the best around and the next month people don't know what you're talking about whereas Valet Pro has been sitting there not necessarily in the foreground of fashion but just plodding away and developing product and bringing them out and the nice thing is you know you can pick up a bottle of Valet Pro anywhere in, in the country and it's going to be consistent product, whereas quite a lot of the smaller brands, you know, they, it can vary bottle to bottle, in my experience, of what have been sent sometimes. Okay. You know, two bottles with the same labels on, and it's just different parts of the, of the, of the mixture, or I don't actually know always what is the cause. Um, but there is a consistent reliability side, which I think is a, an important, particularly from a professional. If you're going to be buying 25 litres of product, you need to make sure that every 25 litres is going to be a reliable thing you have in the van, and it's going to do the job that you bought it for. So that, that, that's all to do with standards, mm. you know, so, um, you know, that, and that's the, back, that, that's the behind the scenes work that goes in that, you know, we, uh, we, we work very hard at, you know, making sure that we get things right. Mm. You know, it doesn't always happen, but, um, you know, um, uh, uh, but as you'll see when you go into the lab, you know, we do proper stability testing. Yes. Um, and uh, so we understand, you know, uh, we, yeah, and we do the, we've got the details so we know how to use the product, we know how to get the best out of it. We know what happens um, if it gets into a certain um, um, temperature situations. We, we, we know what happens if it gets um, diluted and left in a bottle. So, you know, we're able to formulate and protect our products against um, bacteria and bugs, especially with pH neutral formulations, that becomes quite important. That was something, if you read the uh, last issue, which is issue 8 of the magazine, we had John Hogg talking about snow foam concoction, and you put in antifungal, antibacterial stuff in there to stop it going off, and it yeah. does literally go off, which yeah. is fascinating. I didn't really think that was such a big deal, but he said the, the way to spot a quality product is keep it for a year and, and see if it's exactly the same as when you bought it. Yeah. Um, and also, a uh, quick nod to compliance and CLP and reach and all the rest of it. Every bottle that I've seen from Valipro over the years as well, in the days of the old little little logos, and now we've got the big sort of EU friendly ones, um, you're absolutely on point with that sort of thing as well. Yeah. Which from a professional point of view, you know, we always suggest that all the guys should have all the MSDS sheets and all the relevant documentation in the van when they're using the products, just in case. Um, and I know with you guys, it's all, the, all the MSDS is easy to access, all the labels are clear, and it's got useful instructions as well, is another thing. So it's about that kind of, it's that reliable, steady brand, isn't it? If you were to compare yourself to a car brand, who would you compare yourself to? Oh, that's an interesting question, not something I've really thought about. Mm. Um, uh, uh, maybe Audi? Um, okay. um, um, uh, because you know it's you know the, 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 they may not be the, the, the prettiest. Uh, um, some people disagree. Some people think they're very pretty. Okay, that's just got me in a whole deep isn't it? It does. Yeah. It's but, fine, though. but no, I, I see your point. So uh, not not what you mean is not, not like a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's they're, they're not gone out to be the prettiest car. They've gone out to be practical mm -hmm. and um, technically very good at what what, what they, they do. do. And uh, you know they they make some of the the fastest road cars, don't they, really? They, they, yeah, well, if you go on the M4, it's always now the A4 1.9 turbo diesel that's that's about that far from your rear bumper, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, I think that's a fair analogy, I think it's cool. Um, so in terms of what we're going to do today, I just wanted to run through the different things and what you can expect from this video. Um, we've talked to Greg, we've learned a little bit about Greg, we've learned about the founding of the, of the business, about how it all starts, and, and we'll talk more about the future and where you think it's going. Um, then we're going to look at the product side and we're going to talk to Josh, who's your tame chemist. Yeah. Um, and they've got a small lab here that does a lot of the, what I regard as kind of, it's not, it's not beta testing, it's, it's more of the kind of 
um, readying for market, so the stability testing. They've got a fridge with lots of products and seeing whether they'll separate. They've got all sorts of other bits and bobs in there. And it's fascinating to see, it's that extra step that a lot of people won't do that I think is quite important. And so we'll have a word with Josh about that. Um, then we're looking at production. So there's gonna be a little bit of operations management and I do like a bit of operations management. Um, just an FYI, they have the coolest forklift trucks I've ever seen here. Um, and we'll go into great depth on those until it's banned at the edit. Um, and so we're gonna be talking to uh, Milton about that. Um, who's going to be chatting through how you manage such a vast volume of products going in and out of the business. Um, and then we're looking at the support side, how you support your reseller channel, your distribution channel, as well as professionals, as well as end users, um, which I imagine is, is, a, is, is hard work sometimes in terms of the volume of calls. And it, it's, it, Any business is all about managing relationships. And, yeah. you know, that's, uh, you know, you, you'll have your internal relationships, you'll have your... Um, um, your, 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 your customer base, which will be the consumers, um, um, even if you're not trading directly, there's a relationship there to manage, and uh, you know with your resellers and distributors, mm. and it's getting everyone's expectations on the right level. So um, that's yeah. an interesting topic you brought up, and we will talk about that later. So even though it's the difference between it's it's that kind of the distribution channels between you and the end user sometimes. So as you're saying, so your direct communication is with the little reseller or the big reseller, and but actually the person you're trying to communicate to, you don't meet them, you don't see them because that's the, that's the end user. So it's, that's an interesting topic of conversation. Then we've got some marketing talk, and I quite enjoy that as well. So we'll be talking to Mark about that. Um, and then uh, finally we'll do a walk around and a sort of a catch up at the end. Um, okay. I think it's going to be a very exciting day. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video and we shall start to cruise forth into the uh, main factory area.